Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another review and today we have the Smoant uh, Ranker which is a temperature controlled, well does temperature control, it's called a TC218 so it does 218 watts max um, and it does have temperature control and all that stuff as well. I just use it on wattage mode most of the time like pretty much all of my mods and for those of you who watch my reviews you've probably seen that I've always been rocking the VaporSig VTX200 and I've tried quite a few mods since this one and none of them have really, you know, none of them have really converted me until this came along. So I've been using this for quite a while now and I'm actually really, really impressed with it. It does have a few little quirks, but it's been really good. Absolutely love it. Really nice in the hand, really solid. But enough about that. Um, let's get down to the up close and personal, then we'll come back out. We'll talk about the pros, cons and all the other good stuff. All right, welcome to the up close and personal on the Small Ant Ranker. TC218. So there it is on the front there. You can see it's like a uh, shiny silver type foil look showing the mod. Uh, this is the black color. I think it comes in two oh, two colors only. It's the black and then it has the one that has like the brown leather look. Um, I think it's brown and silver. Uh, this one's just all black. Tells you what you get on the back, but let's get it open and I'll show you everything you get. All right, so in the box we get the little quality pass certificate. We get a little battery safety card. Uh, what's that after sale service and warranty card and then you get the manual um, the manual isn't too bad It's a little bit brief, but it's very easy to use this mod So, you know, you're not really going to use it and you get a USB cable for firmware updates and charging although I'll always tell you to uh, charge any external battery mod you charge your batteries um, in a uh, External charger. So let's have a look at the mod That is it there Let me try and zoom in a little bit all right, so that's it there. Um, I did watch a review where someone said, it was from quite a while ago, someone said that the, the Smoyant Ranker is very flimsy, it feels plasticky, and it's very, very like lightweight, or not lightweight, but just feels very cheap. But I'm not sure if they got like a pre-release model or, or whatever, but this to me is one of the sol most solid mods I've ever actually held in my hand. It's got a really, really nice weight to it. Um, it's just extremely solid. There is no rattling. No rattling whatsoever, the, any of the buttons, the batteries, nothing nothing like that. It's extremely solid. And like I said, it does. it is quite heavy. It's got a really heavy feel to it. Um, so let's just start on the top. There's our 510 uh, plate there. Now, um, because of the way this is designed, how the whole top slants and then the 510 part plate is flat here, you are limited in terms of uh, the size of your atomizer or tank. 24.5mm is what the size of this is. So 24.5mm will fit on this nicely, as you will see. This is the smock, big baby beast. And as you can see, there's that's 24.5mm, there's no overhang or anything like that. Looks pretty nice. All blacked out. And then I've also got another tank here. It's the uh, Joytech Riftcore Duo. And I think this is 26mm from memory. But even that, even though there's some overhang, it still looks very nice on there. So, you know, it's not a big concern that it's only 24.5mm, because even if you've got 25, 26mm, um, it still looks pretty good. I think because of the way it's designed, um, the overhang isn't obvious because, you know, you're not overhanging the main parts of the mod, you're just overhanging that little circle section or the 510 plate there at the top. But anyway, let's um, have, keep having a look around the mod. On the back, uh, apparently this is real leather. I'm not 100% sure myself, but from what I've seen and heard, it is real leather. And that just wraps around all the way to the front there. Uh, then you've got the Smoyant logo, Ranker, USB port there for charging and firmware updates. Although I said before, you should always charge... Uh, Mods with removable battery should always be charged in external charges. Uh, you've got the fire button here, which is this whole side, which is pretty cool. I really like that. Never had any problems with that. It's pretty solid. There is a bit of side to side movement, but nothing serious. And it just fires every single time. You can fire it this way as well if you want. Although it is a little bit harder because the button can go in on a bit of an angle. So uh, you are best to fire it like that. And if you, know, if you want to use it in your other hand, you can fire it that way as well. So. Yeah, the fire button to me is really, really nice. And let's have a look at the battery compartment. So there is a bit of movement in the uh, lid, but it's not really a worry at all, because once it's closed, it's as solid as a rock. But as you can see there, you've got the negative marking and your positive. Let's throw these in. Um, and we'll shut it down. As you can see, it's extremely solid. There is no movement, no shaking of anything on the mod at all. So very, very solid. Let's put a tank on this and I'll uh, take you through the menu system and all that kind of stuff. 
All right, so I got a tank on it, so everything works. I uh, hope you can see the screen properly. Let me just give that a little bit of a wipe. Yeah, I don't know if that helped, but as you can see, there was a wallpaper there, so you can have custom wallpapers. Um, on the top here, we've got our battery, so it shows each battery, um, what each battery is doing. Now, what I've noticed about this mod is that it always shows, and it's mainly this side, it always shows this battery a little bit lower than that one. It's nothing to do with the balanced charge of my batteries because um, when I put in my charger, if I take them out as soon as they're charged, it still does that no matter what batteries I've had in there. So I think it's just a little bit of a, an issue with the device. Uh, I've got Smiant logo there. There is a clock right there in the middle between the two batteries and I believe the time is saved um, because there is another tiny battery in this mod that you know keeps the, the clock settings and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. But I'm not sure what will happen if that battery dies, but anyway. Uh, we've got a wattage here, so simple up and down. It does 218 watts max. And it does round robin, so when you get to 218 watt, it will roll back down to zero, and you can keep going that way. Uh, under there, you'll see it says mode max, and that just means uh, like the ramp up mode. There is a, I think, a soft, uh, normal, and max, and I just leave it on max because it seems to ramp up quicker. In the bottom left there, we've got our applied voltage, so how much voltage we're pu pulling out of our batteries, or how much voltage batteries is putting out, I should say, and then we've got a resistance of our coil just there. So to turn off and on the device, one thing I will say, and as far as I know, you can't lock the device. I've looked everywhere, um, but it does turn off and on very quickly. So I've just been turning it off and on where I, you know, where I normally want to lock it. So uh, five clicks, one, two, three, four, five, turns off, one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, it turns on and off very quickly. So in my opinion, there probably isn't really a need for a lock function, um, although it would have been pretty cool to have. So three clicks will take you into the menu system, one, two, three. And the first one there has got variable wattage mode. So this is where you can set up that uh, like ramp up speed kind of thing. So you've got minimum, normal, max, and then you've got uh, curves. Um, so you can set your own custom curves. So you can say, you know, do 70 watt for the first second and then 60 watt for the second second and things like that. I don't really use that. I pretty much just use wattage mode on max. Uh, then you've also got your temperature control mode, which you've got nickel, titanium, stainless steel, TCR, and TC curves. Uh, I'm not sure how to get back out of this. There we go. Uh, then you've got just normal settings in there, so this is where you can set the brightness. Now there is an issue with this mod that I keep having, and that is that when you set the brightness, so let's just set it all the way down, what you'll see, it'll go back, yeah, see it's gone full brightness again. It doesn't seem to save the brightness. Um, the only way I've worked out how to fix this was to just do this right here, where is it? Factory reset, and then it works again for a while, but then again it stops working again. So I'm not sure what that's to do with, but... Um, it's stuck on full brightness at the moment, which I don't mind anyway, but um, just thought I'd mention that. This is where you set the time, so you can have 24 hour format or 12 hour, and you just set the time in there. Display, so there is two display versions, or two like screen versions. That's the uh, number two, which is pretty cool. It's like a bit of a rev gauge. And the first one, the first one's just the one we had before. Timeout is just how long it takes for the screen to timeout. And then you've got screensaver, so you can pick the screensaver. You can have a clock or a wallpaper. Let's set the clock. I'll show what that looks like quickly. And, oops, watch, sorry. Just hold the button. You hold the uh, fire button down to select things. And you'll see when this screen times out, there'll be a, like an analog clock or a watch. There you go. Um, but I prefer to have that little wallpaper there, so that's in screensaver. Go back to wallpaper, it'll let you select your wallpaper. Now to upload wallpapers like my custom one I have here, you can just do that via the USB and you download the Smoant software. Um, I think that's all for the settings. I think so, yep. Then you got wallpaper, which again you can pick from. So I've just got my little Cloudy Boys one there, looks pretty cool. And you can see it just in the background there, but when the screen does time out, you'll see my little Cloudy Boys uh, logo, which is awesome. Come on, there it is. So yeah, um, very, very easy to use menu system and in my opinion, extremely, extremely solid mod. It weighs quite a bit. Um, it's got a very nice hand presence, look at that. It is a bit bigger than a lot of other mods I have used, like dual 18650s, and it would have been nice for this to be, you know, 2700 or 21700 compat compatible. There's definitely a lot of room there for that, but I'm just not, I'm not sure when this mod came out and um, 18650s were probably more popular at the time anyway, so. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's go back out. I'll talk about the pros, cons, and all the other good stuff. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the up close and personal on this My Ant Ranker. Um, just quickly, we'll go through some pros and cons. So pros are, um, 
some people, sometimes I like really heavy mods, sometimes I like really light mods. So this one here is the lightest mod that I've ever had. Still a dual 18650, just like this. Uh, this is the opposite end of the scale. This is extremely heavy and, you know, quite quite big and bulky. Um, this thing, it's got a bit of a triangular shape, so a little bit stranger to hold, um, whereas this is a bit more natural to hold. But it is bigger. Um, I wouldn't say bigger, but it is heavier. Um, so yeah, I like mods that are really, really light, but also like mods that are really, really heavy. They give you this kind of presence in your hand. When you put it in your pocket, you know it's there and things like that. So the weight for me is uh, is a pro and just the build quality in general. I'm finding it to be really, really solid mod. Um, there's no rattles, no shakes, anything like that. And as I said in my up close and personal, I did see someone review this and I'm not sure if it was a pre-release version or something like that, but they were saying that um, it was really flimsy and weak and things like that, but I've found the total opposite with it. I think it's solid as a rock. It just fits in the hand nicely. Um, yeah, so another pro would be, like I love the fire button, just like that. It's really cool. Um, what are the pros? I like the screen, I think it's awesome. Um, the buttons, like I said, there's no rattling. It's comfortable in the hand. It performs well, so performance-wise, it ramps up pretty quickly, it hits really hard. It probably doesn't perform just quite as good as this. Um, this seems to ramp up a lot faster. Um, but in terms of the hit, they're probably on par with each other. The ramp up on this just may be a little bit slower, but I have gotten used to that, you know, in the time I've been using it. Um, I think that's about all for the pros, so I'm, I'm being extremely happy with that. But let's get on to some cons. So some cons are that little uh, ring kind of section at the top there we spoke about. It is only 24.5 millimeter, so you can go bigger, and it doesn't look too bad on this mod because you've got the larger flat section below it. Um, but it would have been nice if that maybe was a little bit bigger, but I showed you in the up close and personal I put a 26 mil tank on and it didn't look too bad at all. So a bit of a nitpicky con with that one uh, Another con is um, That whole brightness thing how it wouldn't save the brightness and I had to factory reset it and then it seems to just keep happening So I'm not sure what that is. I have done a firmware update um, But it didn't seem to fix it. I also emailed smile and and um, They wanted me to take a video of it and show them so I was just like whatever. I'll just leave it um, what else? Cons, cons, cons. I think, honestly, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, I've been really, really happy with it. I just think it's, I've said this about 20 times now, but just really, really solid. I love the hand feel. Um, another con is maybe that I wish it was like dual 21700 or dual 2700. It's definitely the room there for it. Um, but like I said, I think when this mod came out, 18650, 18650s were probably a little more popular than the 2700s, 21700s. I'm not even sure how old this mod is, but I'm pretty sure they did come out quite some time ago. So, um, any other cons? Cons, cons, cons? I don't really think so. I mean, the button fires pretty well. Sometimes if you, if you grab it from, you know, the wrong side, like you try and fire it from this way, sometimes the button, it doesn't get stuck, but it's a weird feeling. So it is best to use it, you know, with your fingers on the trigger like that. Um, but yeah, I can't really think of any other cons apart from that brightness issue, some little bugs like that, but, um, yeah, if you do a factory reset, it goes back to normal. Mine's stuck on full brightness now, which is fine. Uh, another pro I forgot to mention is I love the little wallpapers. I love the fact it's got a clock. Um, I don't really use it, but I've always thought mods with screens, they should just have clocks. They're there, you know, sometimes I pull it out and it's nice to just be able to look at it and say, oh, okay, it's the time, whatever it is. So I find that's pretty cool. Um, like I said, yeah, the performance has been really, really good. I've really enjoyed it. Ramp up is a little bit slower, like I said, than the Vaporsig VTX. It's a little bit slower than the Vupu Drag and Vupu 2 and other mods like that. Um, but once you're used to it, it's not too bad at all. Once it does ramp up, it does hit very, very hard. And, um, yeah, overall, I've just been really, really pleased with it. And another thing I just forgot to mention is the battery life. So, the battery life is good. I'll get, um, pretty easily get a full day out of this using, you know, like a 0.4 and call it 45 watts or 50, 55 watts. Getting a full day is usually quite easy. I do find the Vaporsig VTX to be much, much better on battery life. This one I could stretch a day and a half, sometimes even almost two days out of. Um, so I don't know how they do it, but uh, it's possible possible that the minimum uh, minimum battery voltage is much lower on the Vaporsig than it is the Smiant. But I find that's pretty common along, among most of the Smiant products because I did have the uh, Chiron TS218, which is that touchscreen uh, mod and that battery life in that sucked so it used to turn off i could take the batteries out and put them in something else and they'd still have you know a quarter of charge left in them but um one thing i will say the minimum battery voltage on this mustn't be too bad because if i take the batteries out of this when it's flat and put them in the vapor sig the vapor sig says there's only about five percent left in the batteries so 
Um, I think it is using all the batteries like pretty well. I just think it maybe maybe it's not a, not as efficient when it ramps up and fires and things like that because the battery life is definitely not as good as the Vaporsig VTX 200 watt. But in saying that, I think for a dual 18650 mod, I think the battery life is pretty good. Getting a full day out of it, day and a half. Um, I could probably stretch two days if I didn't chain vapor or anything like that, but. Yeah, full day, heavy vaping, pretty easily for me. But like I said, that's on 45 watt at 0.4 ohms. So that's that's a pretty low wattage. You're not pushing out much voltage. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, the other little con I just forgot to mention, just remembered, uh, the whole battery thing, for some reason, one battery, it's usually the battery on the right side there, it usually reads lower than the left battery no matter what. So I'll pull my batteries fresh out of the charger. The charger will tell me that all the cells are balanced and they're full. But when I chuck them in this, there's always one that's a little bit lower. So I think the monster's got issues with reading uh, the battery voltage, you know, all that well. So overall, I think this is an awesome, awesome mod. I think the build quality is beautiful. I love the way it feels in the hand. It feels like kind of like a, like a pistol trigger type thing. Um, yeah, I think the build quality is one of the best mods I've ever had, to be honest with you. Um, even that trigger, I thought, you know, there's going to be issues with this button. But so far, it's proved to be really, really nice. Um... And like I said, there's no rattling, no shaking, nothing like that. It's absolutely solid. It weighs a lot, um, which I kind of like for a mod sometimes. But it just feels really good in the hand. I've said this so many times, but it really does feel great in the hand. And you can just squeeze it when you want to fire. It's really, really cool. So um, price-wise, I paid $84, $84 Australian dollars from this. I bought it from House of Vape. And those guys there are legends because what they did is, I'm not, not sure if you've seen my review on the iJoy Capo Squonka. Um, but that was a horrible device and I actually asked them do you mind if I send that back pay a bit of a, a bit extra and swap it for this one and they were actually cool with it so um, I hope they didn't get shafted with me doing that I did say to them if you are going to lose money or something please let me know and I won't do it um, but they're more than happy to do that so cheers Jay for sorting that out at House of Vape there in Sydney Australia and um, I think that's about it so overall Massive thumbs up for this mod. I've been using it now for quite a while and it's become my daily mod. So um, instead of you guys getting sick of seeing this in every video, now it's going to be this one most likely. So um, yeah, that's about all. Thanks very much for watching. Um, there will be a written uh, written review of this mod and you'll find that link in the description below. And I'll also put a link in the description below to where I purchased this from, which was House of Vape, like I said before. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching. Yeah.